This is the 286S microphone preamp from DBX that I use to uh, provide amplification for my microphone. It's an Audio-Technica P48 condenser mic. And uh, I use this device also for audio processing to trim out noise and uh, provide a little compression. Uh, basically, I just, I'm looking for good audio quality for the videos that I record. And this device is running into a Sterling analog to digital converter that plugs into my Mac. And I've been using this device for a while. Um, and, and and I when I bought it, I, I really do like it because I like having the fine grain, fine grain control over audio without having to do a lot of post-processing. But I've noticed last few videos that I've used, that, that I've tried to record, this, the quality is just not good. The um, distortion that I hear and... Um, most recent video I tried to record, um, gain was being sort of randomly cut, and I was actually hearing static, uh, which I'm going to play here in a second for you. So I started looking on forums and such, and there were a number of people that were reporting issues with this, uh, from being new to you know working fine, and then suddenly sort of not working. So a uh, number of things people said that there are some chips that have a tendency to go bad, and other people reported um, not good solder joints on some some devices. So I decided to take a look at this. But before I do that, I'm going to play a sample of some of the audio problems that I was getting from this device. Test, 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 test. Mic check, test one, two. Mic check, test one, two. Test, 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 test. Test, mic check, test one, two, test, 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 mic check, test one, two, mic check, test one, two, mic check, test one, two, test, 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 mic check, test one, two, test one, two, test, 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 mic check, test one, two, mic check, test one, two, mic check, test one, two, test one, two, check, check. Mic check, test one, two. Test, test, test. Test, test, mic check. Test one, two. Mic check, test one, two. I opened up the 286S and um, there's four screws, two on each side and then one in the center. It's pretty easy, so I'm not going to show it. And um, I decided to walk through each one of the chips that are on top of the board. So I started with U3, and this is over on the uh, input, the mic, mic preamp side of the board. And I just took a pick and started testing each one of these pins to see if they were soldered onto the board or not. Just one by one, a little bit of light pressure. Didn't want to bend them too bad. And, uh, you know, if they move at all, they, uh, they're not soldered right. And so that chip seemed to be okay. So now I'm on U4 and uh, going to go with my pick and test each one of these pins out. And you can see that pin there. It, it, I, I was about to call it out when I um, first saw it. Uh, it. It definitely moved, and I uh, did it again because when I was doing it, I caught. A, I thought I caught a glim glimpse of it moving. You could kind of see on the right side of the pin that uh, it was moving a little bit. So that one's definitely sus. So here's U5, and I'm doing the same thing. Oh, and you can see that one move, that third pin. And then that pin right there, and that happens to be ground. This is a LM339, which is a comparator. I don't know that this is in the audio path. I'm guessing that this might be hooked up to the LEDs that are on the front of the unit to show you the decibel level. Um, but in any case, it's definitely, you know, that pin's definitely loose. So here's U6, 
same exercise. These small chips seem to be okay. The little um, noise you hear right now is actually the fan on my laptop going crazy because I'm doing the voiceover right now to the video. Because when I did this work, of course, my audio processing unit was not working properly. So here's U7. Uh, now, this chip is, and some of the forums claimed that, the, that these chips go bad. I'm not exactly sure what these chips are, but um, the pin layout is definitely different. It's smaller, so my, my probe tool barely fits in between these pins. Uh, but I uh, definitely was keen to test each one of these pins out to make sure that they were all soldered right. And as it turns out, it kind of seemed like they were. I went through them all pretty carefully and uh, tested them all out. Now, you know, the forums say these chips, some um, forum posts that I read suggested that these chips, quote unquote, have gone bad. I find that just kind of hard to believe. I mean, chips do go bad and you know, typically it's from heat or over voltage or, you know, I mean, I, I suppose they could, they can become defective over time, but I just kind of found it hard to believe that they would be defective. In my case, I didn't really find any, any loose pins with those, those smaller form factor chips, but you can see that one right there. That pin is definitely wiggling you can see the light on the right hand side of it wiggling so for sure that there's that uh, chip is not soldered properly so i keep testing each one of these trying not to damage the pc board And definitely that chip is sus. And that is not a comparator. That's something else. I don't. I hadn't looked up the data sheet to see what that chip actually does. I uh, decided to take a marker because I was finding these chips being defective or, or being not soldered correctly. So I decided to take a marker to start marking them because I needed to know which ones to go back and solder. So here's U9 going through the same process. And you can kind of look at the solder on the bottom of that chip. It just doesn't look quite right. And what I don't like about this chip is that you can see it's, it's like the pick and place machine that put it on there was not aligned properly because on the top it's covering the pads and on the bottom the legs barely are soldered onto the pads. And, you know, in that case, all the pins seem to be tight. I didn't see any wiggle, but just don't like the way those pins were placed. So this is U10. Oh, you can see that one wiggle right there. The little, little daylight on the right-hand side of that pin. Or I guess, oh, and there's another one. See how that one sort of wiggles? And then here's another one. So again, this is another comparator. And again, there's a lot of lights. This is probably in the compressor area. So there's a lot of lights that these comparators are probably driving. Again, probably not in the audio path, but again, it's very sus. So I'm marking this one because this definitely needs to be reflowed. And here's this, another one of these smaller form factor chips. You'll notice that it seems to be soldered on a little skewed to the right. Don't, you know, I think it's certainly it's fine because this device has been, this device was working fine when I first got it. So, uh, you know, I'm sure it's fine. But again, the solder looks a little bit sus. I don't know whether that's just extra flux that was not cleaned off. But, uh, yeah, definitely looks a little suspect. I'm going to move my mic a little farther away from my laptop, too, because I still hear 
you know, in the my my recording, my head headset that I'm monitoring, I still hear a little noise, and I'm not sure whether it's noise from the unit or just noise from my the fan spinning on my laptop. It sounds like the noise from my laptop. And all those pins seemed tight. So moving right along to the next chip, a bunch of chips on this board. They're all on a line, so I'm just checking each one of them. Here's U12. These all seem fine. Checking each one. And again, there seems to be more pin soldered to pad on top than there is soldered to pad on bottom. So now into U13. Definitely see a little bit of movement there on the right hand side again. Same here, same on that pin. I probably decided to stop and just mark it because I saw the movement. Oh, and there's definitely movement on that one. And again, that is not a comparator. I'm not sure what it is, but it's not a comparator. And this, I think, is part of the deesser, or at least it's close to the deesser uh, pots, which, you know, I would assume maybe that's part of the deesser. And I definitely noticed noise and crackling when I would goof around with the deesser. Not all the time, but sometimes. So we're on to U14 here. Oh, and see, there's another wiggly one. So again, I, yep, I stopped, marked it. So yeah, this, you know, this device, it travels with me. Uh, it, it does, I do have a, a case for it. It's, it is protected, but it's definitely been on the road. Uh, you know, it's, I bought it in probably 20, something like that. Uh, you know, these units made by DBX or uh, whatever the company is, they've been out for a long time, but I bought it new from Guitar Center or, you know, one of those, one of those places. And it's been working, it, it worked fine when I first got it, but I've noticed the quality has de degraded over time. I thought maybe it was my imagination, but definitely in the last few days when I was trying to record a new video series, it, the game would just drop out and I'd be crackling and static and just, it's terrible. So here's U16. Now, you know, the thing with these kind of problems is, a, is that, you know, your mileage may vary. You may be having problems with the unit, but the problems that you're having may not match the symptoms of problems I'm having because, you know, was it, oh, yeah, and I guess I found another one. I was talking while, while and not looking, so I guess it was that uh, one, two, three, four, fifth pin. Uh, you know, your symptoms may differ from my symptoms because... If this is just related to the pick and place machine when the manufacturer of these boards wasn't quite aligned, or maybe they didn't put enough solder paste, maybe they didn't heat the solder paste up quite well enough. You know, like I said, it worked, this this device worked fine when I bought it. 
slowly over time it, it started getting worse. So this U17 chip I think is going to be fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> and of course I slipped and scuffed the board and now I'm like all worried about it a lot. Okay, did I cut that trace? Is it is it fine? I don't know. I decide, yeah, okay. Eh, it goes up to this via. I can see copper there, so I didn't, you know, I just cut I just uh scratched the mask. I didn't cut the copper, so moving right along. So testing all these pins. This one looks fine. And this is down on the uh the end this is like where the expander and the output. Uh, controls are, you know, not 100% sure that all these chips directly apply to each one of these sections, but, you know, proximity's pretty good guess. And, you know, that solder and the alignment sort of looks okay. Again, it's skewed to the top. That one pin on the bottom right there looks like it's sort of at the limit of the top of that pad. It's kind of hard to tell. But certainly, again, the chip is skewed to the top. Okay, so now after all that, um, I'm getting ready to reflow these chips that I marked with uh, suspect pins, and uh, didn't have any capped on tape. So decided, all right, th those capacitors could get blown up, and then the potentiometers that are that are on the front, as well as those plastic switches, you can see. I really didn't want to melt any of those. There's also some plastic standoffs that hold the board in place. Didn't want to melt any of that stuff, so just got some aluminum foil. It's better than nothing, I suppose. And uh, just kind of molded it to fit over all the components. And sorry for the camera, it's focusing on the light, not the board. Eventually it sort of gets back in focus. There we go. And uh, yeah, decided to cover these big caps. They don't they don't like a lot of heat either. You know, I, I was going to keep the airflow down and uh, keep it focused on the chips, but, you know, hot air rework station gets hot. And uh, just trying to protect these components as best I could. So uh, now I go in with some flux. And, you know, I've, I've been doing electronic stuff for many, many years, but, and, and have used a soldering iron, I don't know, countless years. Never really worked with a hot air rework station much. You know, and all these are surface mount components. I'm a sort of old school through a hole. Uh, and then I did wire wrap way back in the day. Uh, but uh, I've got a hot air rework station just as a hobby lately. And, Started playing around and, you know, I had a practical use now for it here. So got got some flux on here, getting ready for the rework station to reflow these chips. You know, I, I don't remember which of these pins uh, were, uh, were loose, but it was the ones on the bottom. So here comes the hot air. So this is U5. And, uh, you know, again, you can see those pins on the bottom kind of skewed on the pads really too close to the top. So the chip's not centered. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is to kind of get this chip more centered on the pads. I'm not always successful. Of course, reflowing the solder is the real goal here. So I want the chip to kind of float on top. And I kind of expect the chip to kind of snap in on these pads. It doesn't really do that, though. I don't know whether I don't maybe have enough... Uh, flux. Of course, I didn't get it hot enough yet. I'm still working to get it hot. My oh, there we go. And see now, now it moved. My hot air is on about 400 degrees C and about half, 50 percent air or something like that. And of course, I didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't move the device. The chip right next to it was sus as well. So uh, I just moved the hot air immediately over because the board was already hot. So I didn't move the device, but. I reflowed both of those chips. 
So, uh, you know, now I'm going to go back over my handiwork and try to move these chips. You know, you can see that the, that the IC is a little bit kind of skewed to the right. It's not really a big deal. But the, the pins on the bottom are moved down, you know, relative to the pads a little bit. So they're, you know, they're, they, they're contacting more of the solder. And as you can see, these things are now, they are rock solid. They are not moving at all. And that's what you want. If you see any movement whatsoever, they are not soldered right. So that chip seemed fine now. So I'm going to go check U, what is this, U6? Sorry, U5. Again, I moved this chip a little bit. I, I probably would have liked to have moved it farther down a little bit more, but the solder's now flowed much better on those pins. Those pins are not moving at all. I don't think any of the pins on the top uh, were loose at all. So that all looked good. So take off all of my uh, heat <laughs> heat uh, material, heat shield material. Nothing looked like it blew up. So a uh, quick jump cut to U8, this next chip. Uh, you can see a little bit of tinfoil over there on the side. I, again, didn't show all the stuff that I covered up, but capacitors, plastic stuff, potentiometers, tried to cover all that stuff up. Hot air is at the same, 400 degrees C, about 50%. Seemed to work just fine. Don't want, don't want the heat on these chips for very long. And this board is pretty thin, so it didn't really take, you can see it's already, it already moved and yeah, moved too much. So now I'm trying to get it back into place. And of course it's going to wiggle and it doesn't really snap into place, probably because I don't have enough flux. I'm not exactly sure why. A lot of YouTuber folk that I see do this. It just seems to snap so easy for them. Now, in this case, you can see I got the, the chip further down Top pins maybe too far down on those pads, uh, but I sort of move on to the next chip, U10. This one will sus as well. And it was close to the last chip, so the board was already pretty hot. So this one, this one uh, floats pretty easy, or it, it unsolders pretty quick or reflows, I guess, is the right word. Yep, and there it moved. And I decided to leave well enough alone because it actually moved down a little bit, which is kind of just what I wanted. And they all start hardening. And then I decide I didn't find any problem with U11, but... I just don't like the way it looks. I don't like the way it's skewed sideways a bit. And I don't know whether it's just flux that wasn't cleaned off or what, but given that the board was already hot, I decided eh, I'm just going to reflow this one too. I don't think this was necessary. But I did get it straight. And you, know, you can see on the bottom, those pins and that solder just looks better now. And everything is cooling down. So onto you, 
or sorry, back to U8. So this is the ones that I just soldered, uh, testing each one of these pins out now to see if they're solid. And they seem to be solid. Not moving a bit. Now this one, I still don't like, let's see that bottom left pin. Seems like it's barely touching that pad. Now I'm testing them all. And I don't see any movement. Well, not on that one. But I decide after looking at it, I just I don't like the alignment. It seems like the chip is too far up still. And that bottom left pin is just doesn't even look like it's soldered onto the pad, even though it didn't move. At least, well, didn't look like I tested it, but just didn't like the way it looked. So, reflow it again. And that looks better still. I still, again, think I could have moved it down a bit. Oh, but wait, but look. So see that bottom left pin? You can see, uh, you know, you can see solder on it. So I think that's what made me happy with it. And I did go back and check it. But that probably cut that section out when I was uh, post-editing this video. So here's U13. And get some more flux kind of side by side. These chips where um, I put the tin foil. Here comes more hot air. Again, just take your time to protect all the circuitry, capacitors, plastic. There's a little plastic potentiometers on this board, plastic switches on the front panel. Yep, and just make sure that the chip moves around and uh, just try to get those pins as centered as you can. Again, I still didn't get them as centered as I could have, but... At least the solder did flow. You know, maybe they just didn't use quite enough solder paste when they put this board together. So this U14 chip, yep, moved a little bit. Trying to get in line without it being crooked. It was a little crooked. Not too bad, though. Yeah, those joints look a lot better now. So I'll probably go back and, yep, test, these, test each one of these again now. See if any of these move. So far, so good. These seem solid. Uh, I think it's it was on this chip. It was the bottom right pin, and it's not moving at all now. Now moving over here to check my work for U fourteen. Yeah, 
And you'll notice there's no noise now. Fans on my laptop are not spinning at the moment because I had to get up and go do something and come back and start this over and start start in the middle again. Seems very quiet now. Those all look good. Okay, now on to U16. Here we go with some flux. Trying to get my heat shielding to behave. Tin foil. Here comes the hot air. I can hear the fans starting to spin up my laptop now. So a little more, I hear a little more noise now. Trying to get, the, oh, there it goes. Trying to get the solder to flow. Got this chip in better alignment this time. Got it moved down a bit. Now the solder's cooling. Joints look a lot better. Now I'm going to test uh, U16, what I just did. Now these pins look solid. Not moving at all. Looks good. So now I get some Q-tips and some alcohol. And I go through and I clean all these one by one. Clean all over the board where that flux went. Probably not strictly necessary, but it's a good idea. And there seemed to be a little extra flux on there from when this board was assembled in the first place, so... Just went after it everywhere. And those, uh, yeah, those components really got some flux, or maybe it was from original assembly, not sure. So, on closing, this is a unit reassembled, and um, of course I couldn't do this video with audio because my audio processor was disassembled and on the bench. So, you've been listening to the whole video with the results of the handiwork, and so I would say that that was the problem. There were chips on that board that were pins on those chips that were not soldered properly and that was causing all kinds of problems. So hopefully if you found this video helpful, if you have one of these that's misbehaving, this probably should be the first thing you do. Go through all the pins, check them to see if they're solid and if they're not, reflow them.